Hey everyone, welcome back to another PNS overview. Today we'll be taking a look at Gavin de Borilla Pelta. Well, my adventures of figures coming in out of order from Amazon continues. I actually ordered a few more figures before I ordered Gavin, but it's nice to see that they are slowly trickling in. This Boreal Pelta is available on Amazon. It retails for just over $20, and I'll leave a link to that Amazon listing in the description. So before we take a closer look at this figure, let's just go over the packaging really quick. Gavin comes in the standard prehistoric animal models box that all the figures in the line have been coming in with so far. You get a nice full art picture of Gavin on the front, and on top of the box you have a close-up of him. And then inside you get a pamphlet with some information about Borilla Pelton. One side is in Chinese, and the other side is in English, and you get a nice little skeletal of the known elements of Borilla Pelta. So with the packaging out of the way, let's take a look at this very highly anticipated figure. So let's start with a nice 360 degree view of Gavin. It's nice to see Borilla Pelta getting more attention from other dinosaur companies. It's such a well-known dinosaur. If you're even remotely interested in dinosaurs, especially if you're on Facebook, I'm sure you've seen the news article about this specimen pop up on your news feed. A few times the original specimen was discovered in 2017. It was such a remarkably well-preserved animal. We actually even know the color of this dinosaur, which was a reddish color. We even know this animal's last meal. It had a diet primarily of ferns before this poor chap floated out to sea and blew up like a balloon and popped and sunk to the bottom of the ocean, which allowed the specimen to be so well-preserved. So let's just do a couple quick measurements on this figure before we take a closer look. This figure is just under 7 inches long from the tip of the tail to the tip of the stout and just over 2 inches tall at the top of the hips right there. So Barilla Pelta in real life was about 18 feet long. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure just over that 130 scale range. All right, let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on Gavin Stott with that beautiful head sculpt. You can see the eye is painted in black and the eyelids are actually a pinkish color turn the figure from the front you can see all those beautiful osteoderms along the head sculpted in nicely and then going up to the nose you can clearly see the beak and nostrils sculpted in right here absolutely fantastic job on the head and then going up to the neck region you can see all those spikes beautifully sculpted you get some nice smaller scales sculpted in between the row of spikes the spikes are highlighted with some white dry brushing and then the spikes along the side of the body are absolutely fantastically done they have a nice glossy coat on there they give it that keratin sheath look and they are tipped with a little bit of black paint and then going down to the back you can see all those osteoderms beautifully sculpted on here this is the way the armor looked like on the animal in real life from the way the original boreal pelta specimen was preserved my only complaint about the paint you know the main body coloration is this maroonish red color like we've learned from studying the specimen, this is the color the animal would look like in real life. I kind of wish there was a little bit more of a dark wash over here that really make all this sculpted detail pop. And then going down to the front legs, you can see those are beautifully sculpted. A lot of nice scale variation. You get some more large osteoderms and spikes along the forelimbs. The feet are nicely sculpted. Even the underside of the feet are beautifully done. And the underside of the figure is, looks absolutely extraordinary. You know, usually, you know, we don't pay too much attention to the underside of these figures. We don't display them like this. You can see the hip bones poking in right here. And can't really make out a cloak where you could slit on this, but the underside is done in this off-white color with a little bit of, like, pink highlights along the sides of the belly. And then going along the side of the animal, you can see more scale variation and large osteoderm sculpted in. They've got a nice white dry brush over to make that detail pop. Now you can see the size of this figure has a nice dark wash over it, making all those scales pop. Like I said, I kind of wish this was done for the top side of the figure. And then going down for the back, you can see some really nice muscle detail on those hind legs. The feet, even on the hind legs, are beautifully done. And then going down to the tail, you get some more nicely sculpted plates, scoots, and osteoderms, and a nice row of spikes going all the way down. Dry brushed in gray and white. This figure looks absolutely fantastic i love the way this thing came out this is definitely one of the nicest looking armored plated dinosaur figures on the market in my opinion all right let's move on with some comparisons first up are some other borilla pelta figures from other companies first up is the one from collecti that came out about a year and a half two years ago that was the first borilla pelta figure available on the market and the only other one available is the one from Kyoto. All three of these figures are absolutely fantastic, but the PNSO one really takes the cake as the best 
Barilla Pelta figure currently available on the market. The Collecti one is really nice. They really nailed that reddish brown color on the figure. The Kato one is also nice. The way this, they did the spikes with that character looking sheet came out really well. But you know, the biggest issue with it is it's mostly a brown color. But if you display all three of these figures together on your shelf, it looks like you have a little... Uh, family group of Barilla Pelta. So yeah, they do really look nice next to each other. And next up are some other Notasaur figures from other companies. First up is the Sora Pelta from Safari Limited. This is a fantastic figure. And next up is the Collecte Gastonia. And lastly is the very large Walk With Dinosaurs Toy Way Polycanthus. So having all four of these figures together, you get a nice little... Uh, group representation of Notosaurs. And next up is another PNSO model. Here it is with their Ankylosaurus. And I think PNSO really knocked out of the park with these two armored dinosaurs. I still consider their Ankylosaurus one of the best figures in this prehistoric animal models line. And next up are a couple other figures that have released alongside this Boreal Pelta. Here's their Pachyrhinosaurus. And here is their... Microraptor, hopefully the other few figures I order show up soon because I'm really excited to get my hands on those figures, especially the Hadrosaurs. And lastly, here it is with PNSO's Triceratops. And lastly, here it is with their Wilson T-Rex. And I think these two figures look really, really nice next to each other. So, final thoughts on this new PNSO Barilla Pelta. I think this figure is absolutely fantastic. It's a great looking figure for the price. Like I said, it retails for just over $20. The sculpting and detail are absolutely beautiful on this thing. The paint job is really well done. Like I said, the only complaint I had, I just wish there was a little bit of a dark wash over the armor on the back to really bring out all that sculpting detail. But other than that, it is an absolutely beautiful figure. And I think it is the best representation of Borilla Pelta on the market right now, you know, among the very few choices that we have. So yeah, I highly, highly, highly recommend this figure for your collection. It's absolutely beautiful. And like I said, at the beginning of the video, I got this figure off of Amazon. The link to Amazon is in the description. So that will do it for the review. Hopefully the few other figures I have from PNS will uh, make their way here relatively soon. And then next week, I believe Beast of the Mesozoic is finally shipping. And I can't wait for that. I am so excited. I have a couple uh, personal days left from work that I'm definitely going to burn to review all those figures coming in from Wave 1. So definitely stay tuned for those reviews. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.